gentlemen, and welcome to Science for Dummies. And our special guest this evening, biology student Bjorn Snor Andersen, to talk about his project. Good evening, Bjorn. Well, this project is very exciting. Could you uh, tell the folks at home kind of what it's all about, what you're doing, what you didn't do? Well, at the University of Bergen, we have um, been given a project by the municipality of uh, Bergen. Our group has the task to go to a lake, a local lake called uh, called Fuglsvætvanne. And uh, there we're going to conduct some tests to test the water quality. We take water samples, we test for biodiversity, conductivity, a pH, phosphorus level, E. coli levels. Okay, so yeah, the only thing I've heard of that, pH kind of sort of, E. coli kind of sort of also. So what we did in the show is we sent a camera team a little bit around the streets just to interview the, the, the common people, the layman, the laywoman, see what they thought about this and what they know. So uh, let's roll the clip. Hi, what is E. coli? Uh, I think it's a bacteria. Criminal? Candy or something? I like candy. Where does it come from? A prison, I guess. Candy store, maybe? I think it comes from the earth. How can E. coli affect humans? <laughs> well, candy can make you fat, you know. Humans will, uh... Well, shit luck. Where can you find phosphorus? The, the what? Is that some new lipstick brand? What happens if the phosphorus levels are high? I don't know, man. Then I would arrest the one who made it. What is biodiversity? Diversity of bio... Why is it important? It's, uh, I guess it's uh, good for the society and the safety of people. Is it important to have many species of mosquito? Hell no! No, no, no. I hate mosquitoes. What is pH? No. Yeah, that's, that's the Brazilian player, right? Police headquarters. How can extreme pH values in the lake affect the flora and fauna? No, it shouldn't be in the lake. <laughs> Things living in water will die. I have a friend called Flora. Do you mean her? Do you know her? What is the difference between fresh water and seawater? I guess the taste. Seawater is salty, right? That's pretty much what people seem to know about what you do. Yeah, it's, it seems so. Uh, it shows that the general public don't know that much about this stuff. What we do is to try to educate the general public a bit. The first thing you asked, they asked about there was the E. coli. Now, could you explain what E. coli is, what it does, why we need to measure it? It's a bacteria. Uh, we have it in our gut. Some strain of the E. coli can be pathogenic. So okay, that's well, hurtful. Pathogenic, meaning? Uh, hurtful to you. And uh, E. coli is also an indicator of uh, fecal pollution. So what did the results yield? Is there, is there lots of is there lots of poo in this lake, to put it bluntly? Uh, no, it's no. not. Uh, it's, the results are quite good. There are some E. coli. Um, yeah, there will always be something. Mm. Uh, because, of course, around this lake there are animals and uh, there are some yeah, horses and sheep and everything. And there are runoffs in the lake. So there will always be some E. coli, but the levels this year was um, quite good, quite low. If there are a lot of E. coli in the lake, mm. that means that there will, there will be a lot of sewage that will be released into the lake. That means the E. coli levels go up? Yeah. And then maybe the water's not so drinkable? Not just to drink, but also to swim in. If the levels get too high, it's not even safe to go bathe? Yeah. Okay. Bathe or fish or... Or anything, wow. Okay, so um, they also talked about pH, which uh, I guess is not a football player, right? Not a football player. So if, cause like, so if it's a high level, that means it's very acidic? No, it's the uh, other way around. The other way around. If it's low level, it's acidic. So what's the consequences for, for, for the lake? Yeah, if the pH values are really high or really low, uh, that means that fewer animals can live there. <laughs> You're measuring phosphorus levels? I mean, phosphorus is that an element or something? Yeah, that's correct. Phosphorus is an element that all living things depends on. So I, I depend on phosphorus. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you need a phosphorus for your uh, DNA. You can look at phosphorus as a nutrient. Mm -hmm. So if there are a lot of uh, phosphorus, you will get what's called eutrophication of a lake. 
in kind of overgrowth and uh, that could result in uh, all the fish die and uh, but too much is too much algae too little is no algae and then no life basically how, how can humans have an influence or an effect on the phosphorus level well around this lake there are many cabins and uh, also houses and farms so they have to do something with the wastewater before it's leased out to nature. Wastewater treatment plants has to remove at least 90% of the phosphorus. Conductivity. Now, yeah. I'm not sure I understand this. Could you run me by it? Uh, the conductivity is uh, a measure of how well the water leads electricity. Water conducts electricity? If it's uh, salts and minerals in it, the okay. salinity levels are zero. Right, okay. Uh, but the conductivity levels are about... Um, 20 to 30. So uh, the water still leads uh, electricity. Okay, very well. You went there in, in September? September, yes. Okay, and the temperature was? About uh, 10 degrees Celsius. <laughs> and biodiversity, I think I understand, it's like bio is in biology, flora, fauna, and then diversity is in how many different things there are. Pretty That's much. correct. Okay. Very good. So what did you, what exactly did you find about the biodiversity in this lake? Is there loads of different stuff? Is it kind of cosmopolitan lake or is it a bit more? Segregated. Uh, well. So as the different competitors from the different countries uh, are lining up and getting ready to prepare themselves for the competition, let's just have a look at what they will actually be looking for, which will get the judges' attention. First of all, they'll be looking for Megaloptera, a type of large-winged fly, and they'll be looking for Coloptera, a type of beetle, Trichoptera, a type of chest flies, very important, Oligocata, a type of worm, Gladocera, a type of waterfly, flea, Plicoptera, a type of stonefly, Diptera, a true fly, they're also looking for Cupopoda, Small crustaceans, Cyclopodia, a subclass of Cupopoda, looking for Ephemeroptera, Mayflies, and last but not least, Tuberaria, which are a group of flatworms. And they're off, as of course tradition, so I want to start all non impressive, but still a good number of value which isn't too bad. And what looks like a total of three tags, and here are the numbers, and there's a total score of 4.7 for that kind of thing. Not a bad score, respectable to start off with. On to site two, and there we have it, an impressive haul from this contestant with at least seven or eight different tags, and so I can see lots of good and at least eight different Cupopoda, and they must fancy their chance of a score of 5.2. Here comes Sandra 86, can they challenge two's lead? Off they go, and. That is abysmal. Just two couple of and two to terror. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. They cannot possibly stand a chance. They must be taking the long chain for walk home very soon. So far, number two is ahead, but can seven challenge lead? On to snake seven, the last contestant, and they're off. And it's amazing, and it's huge. It's very a massive amount of tax on. So could this be our winner? Here come the numbers. Yes, they've done it. A tremendous score there. 6.48 as the candidates line up to get their medals. Site seven with the gold medal, site two with the silver medal, site one with the bronze medal, and last of all, site six. To the contestants there to see how they feel about those results. What do you think of the sites that you choose this year? Uh, they had noch niemand vorher ausgewählt, und deswegen mussten wir überhaupt nicht, nicht da jetzt erwartet. Und äh, ich bin aber froh, dass ich äh, das trotzdem gemacht habe, denn offensichtlich wurde meine Abenteuerlust belohnt. Bin ich content mit dem Scoring System, den ich dieses Jahr benutze? Nein, ich bin nicht content mit dem Scoring System. Ich bin content mit dem Scoring System, den ich dieses Jahr benutze. Ich bin content mit dem Scoring System, den ich dieses Jahr benutze. Ich bin content mit dem Scoring System, den ich dieses Jahr benutze. Ich bin content mit dem Scoring System, den ich dieses Jahr benutze. Absolut, ich bin content mit dem Scoring System, den ich dieses Jahr benutze. Jeg er rett og slett skuffet over meg selv i dag. Jeg hadde mange individer, men jeg hadde mye oligoseter, så hadde jeg mye dikter, og så hadde jeg mye trikopter. Så det er ikke min feil når det kommer mennesker og driter på lokaliteten min. Du har finished last. Exakt. Hvor disappointed er du nå? Jeg er ikke veldig veldig disappointed, faktisk. Jeg hadde ikke forventet å vinne. Som en britisk person, jeg er ikke alltid å komme ut på toppen, og jeg er veldig 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 in this lake there are many types of different organisms mm -hmm. that means high biodiversity uh, then you can say oh that probably means that the water quality of this lake is good and the biodiversity was was better now than it was last year I mean, why do we need 50 different types of mosquitoes to maintain the ecosystem as it is because uh, if we take uh, away some species then other species will suffer and may die and then the species we them again, then they will die, and uh, at the top of the food chain maybe there's the trout, or you. And now, time for a word from Worst Case Scenario Guy. Biodiversity is down, pH is messed up. If less creatures survive, what else is messing up the environment? Humans! Everything we touch turns to waste. But hey! But hey! But hey! We recycle and we pat ourselves on the back. While the temperature rises, species die out every day. And the amount of fresh drinkable water decreases. And guess what? There's seven billion of us. Oh, one more lake bites the dust? Boo hoo! Nobody cares. And the lack of concern will only make it worse. But this is on a global scale and it won't stop. It can't stop. So you can just hang around and wait for all of the water to fill with deadly bacteria and watch your family die of dysentery. Or you can cut your losses today and just shoot yourself. Just drop dead. It's up to you. 
yeah, that's just about the chip guy is. Thanks, worst case scenario guy. See you next week. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work quite uh, that way. Okay, so we've got very little time left now. Uh, would you like to be able to sum up? Well, the water quality of the lake has improved from uh, last year. And one of the reasons that it has been better, uh, we think, is that the water quality of the Inlet River has been much better than uh, last year. We originally uh, thought that the closing up of the outdoor toilet was, was the reason for uh, the improvement. But uh, as it turned out, that wasn't the case. We don't know what's caused the improvement of the, the river, but that is something to be considered for next year's surveys. And uh, our recommendations to the Bergen municipality uh, is to continue to keep an eye on this water in the years to come, that's important. Uh, but we can say that it has uh, been better. Brilliant, that's about all we've got time for tonight. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, a round of applause in general, and we'll see you next week.